Your Invisible Power by Genevieve Berend. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Algie Pug. Your Invisible Power by Genevieve Berend. Section 0. Forward. These pages have been written with purpose and hope that their suggestions may furnish you a key to open up the way to the attainment of your desires and to explain that fear should be entirely banished from your effort to obtain possession of the things you desire. This presupposes, of course, that your desire for possession is based upon your aspiration for greater liberty. For example, you feel that the possession of more money, lands or friends will make you happier and your desire for possession of these things arises from a conviction that their possession will bring you liberty and happiness. In your effort to possess, you will discover that the thing you most and ultimately need is to be, always, not spasmodically, your best self, that self which understands that the mistakes of those you love are simply misunderstandings. Your feeling that greater possessions, no matter of what kind they may be, will of themselves bring you contentment or happiness, is a misunderstanding. No person, place or thing can give you happiness. They may give you cause for happiness and a feeling of contentment, but the joy of living comes from within. Therefore, it is here recommended, rather than otherwise, that you should make the effort to obtain the things which you feel will bring you joy, provided, as previously stated, that your desires are in accord with the joy of living. It is also desired, in this volume, to suggest the possibilities in store for all who make persistent effort to understand the law of visualization and make practical application of this knowledge on whatever plane he or she may be. The word effort, as here employed, is not intended to convey the idea of strain. All study and meditation should be without strain or tension. It has been my endeavour to show that by starting at the beginning of the creative action or the mental picture, certain corresponding results are sure to follow. While the laws of the universe cannot be altered, they can be made to work under specific conditions thereby producing results for individual advancement which cannot be obtained under the spontaneous working of the law provided by nature. However far the suggestions I have given you of the possibilities in store for you through visualizing may carry you beyond your past experience, they nowhere break the continuity of the law of cause and effect. If, through the suggestions given here, anyone is brought to realize that their mind is a center through and in which all power there is, is in operation, simply waiting to be given direction in the one and only way through which it can take specific action, and this means reaction in concrete or physical form, then the mission to which this book is dedicated has been fulfilled. Try to remember that the picture you think, feel and see is reflected into the universal mind and by the natural law of reciprocal action must return to you in either spiritual or physical form. Knowledge of this law of reciprocal action between the individual and the universal mind opens to you free access to all you may wish to possess or to be. It must be steadfastly borne in mind that all this can only be true for the individual who recognizes that they derive their power to make an abiding mental picture from the all-originating universal spirit of life, God, and can be used constructively only so long as it is employed and retained in harmony with the nature of the spirit which originated it. To ensure this, there must be no inversion of the thought of the individual regarding their relationship to this universal originating spirit, which is that of a son or daughter, through which the parent mind acts and reacts. Thus conditioned, whatever you think and feel yourself to be, the creative spirit of life is bound to faithfully reproduce in a corresponding reaction. This is the great reason for picturing yourself and your affairs as you wish them to be as existing facts though invisible to the physical eye, and live in your picture. An honest endeavour to do this, always recognising that your own mind is a projection of the originating spirit, will prove to you that the best there is, is yours in all your ways. End of foreword Your Invisible Power by Genevieve Berrin this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 1. 
Order of Visualization The exercise of the visualizing faculty keeps your mind in order and attracts to you the things you need to make life more enjoyable in an orderly way. If you train yourself in practice of deliberately picturing your desire and carefully examining it, you will soon find that your thought and desires come and proceed in more orderly procession than ever before. Having reached a state of ordered mentality, you are no longer in a constant state of mental hurry. Hurry is fear, and consequently destructive. In other words, when your understanding grasps the power to visualize your heart's desire and hold it with your will, it attracts to you all things requisite to the fulfillment of that picture by the harmonious vibrations of the law of attraction. You realize that since order is heaven's first law, and visualization places things in the natural element, then it must be a heavenly thing to visualize. Everyone visualizes, whether they know it or not. Visualizing is the great secret of success. The conscious use of this great power attracts to you greatly multiplied resources, intensifies your wisdom, and enables you to make use of advantages which you formerly failed to recognize. We now fly through the air, not because anyone has been able to change the laws of nature, but because the inventor of the flying machine learned how to apply nature's laws, and by making orderly use of them, produced the desired result. So far as natural forces are concerned, nothing has changed since the beginning. There were no airplanes in the year one, because those of that generation could not conceive the idea as a practical working possibility. It has not yet been done, was the argument, and it cannot be done. Yet the laws and materials for practical flying machines existed then as now. Troward tells us that the great lesson he learned from the airplane and wireless telegraphy is the triumph of principle over precedent, and the working of an idea to its logical conclusion in spite of accumulated testimony of all past experience. With such an example before you, can you not realize that still greater secrets may be disclosed? Also, that you hold the key within yourself with which to unlock the secret chamber that contains your heart's desire. All that is necessary in order that you may use this key and make your life exactly what you wish it to be is a careful inquiry into the unseen causes which stand back of every external and visible condition. Then bring these unseen causes into harmony with your conception and you will find that you can make practical working realities of possibilities which at present seem but fantastic dreams. We all know that the balloon was the forefather of the airplane. In 1766, Henry Cavendish, an English nobleman, proved that hydrogen gas was seven times lighter than atmospheric air. From that discovery, the balloon came into existence, and from the ordinary balloon, the dirigible, a cigar-shaped airship, was evolved. Study of aeronautics and the laws of aerial locomotion of birds and projectiles led to the belief that mechanism could be evolved by which heavier-than-air machines could be made to travel from place to place, and remain in the air by the maintenance of great speed which would overcome by propulsive force the ordinary law of gravitation. Professor Langley of Washington, who developed much of the theory which others afterwards improved, was subjected to much derision when he sent a model airplane up, only to have it bury its nose in the muddy waters of the Potomac. But the Wright brothers, who experimented in the latter part of the 19th century, realized the possibility of traveling through the air in a machine that had no gas bag. They saw themselves enjoying this mode of transportation with great facility. It is said that one of the brothers would tell the other, when their varied experiments did not turn out as they expected, It's all right, brother. I can see myself riding in that machine, and it travels easily and steadily. Those Wright brothers knew what they wanted, and kept their pictures constantly before them. In visualizing, or making a mental picture, you are not endeavoring to change the laws of nature. You are fulfilling them. Your object in visualizing is to bring things into regular order, both mentally and physically. When you realize that this method of employing the creative power brings your desires, one after another, into practical material accomplishment, your confidence in a mysterious but unfailing law of attraction, which has its central power station in the very heart of your word picture, becomes supreme. Nothing can shake it. You never feel that it is necessary to take anything from anybody else. You have learned that asking and seeking, have receiving and finding, is their correlatives. 
you know that all you have to do is to start the plastic substance of the universe flowing into the thought moulds your picture desire provides. End of chapter 1